The Loretta Fuddy plane crash video is said to contain footage taken by a passenger inside the aircraft Loretta Fuddy was on as it lost power and crashed into the ocean minutes after departing the Kaleopapa airport on the Hawaiian island of Molokai. All the passengers made it out of the plane, but Loretta Fuddy is said to have died while in the water awaiting rescue. Fuddy was the director of the Hawaii Department of Health from 2011 until her death on December 11, 2014. Though she is best known by Americans as the only person to certify Barack Obama's State of Hawaii Certificate of Live Birth, effectively stifling the controversy over Obama's eligibility to serve as U.S. President. Fuddy's strange and untimely death led to claims of an Obama administration cover-up and numerous theories as to what really happened to her and why. I have spent months now studying and dissecting this video using editing software and forensic imaging applications. This effort has taught me many things, too many things, frankly, uh, and I feel like it's only just started to work out the immense amount of information hidden within this video. One of the first things I had found was photographic evidence that Fuddy's plane did not crash into the ocean at all but was, as the video shows, edited footage of a plane being lowered down to the ocean surface as if by crane or helicopter. In fact, there are a number of scenes in this video that, when critically reviewed, have recorded evidence that makes the plane crash not only impossible, but also documents the great efforts taken to fabricate such a scenario on film in order to support the planned future push of both Fuddy's death and the plane crash narrative to support it out into the public sphere. The purpose of my first video on the Fuddy plane crash video is to show evidence proving the Loretta Fuddy plane crash and supporting video of the crash are not real. To do this, I'll focus in on two main clips that prove no plane crash occurred. For each clip, I'll first show you a shortened, looping section of the clip along with a number of infographics to help you become familiar with and understand the imagery in the video while explaining the relevant information that proves there was no crash, including that which the video makers both want and do not want you to see. After that, we'll watch the clips with just the highlights and then view them once at full speed with original sound. To begin with, the uh, scenes in the Fuddy crash video showing the in-cabin shots and shots out the window, losing the engine power and the beginning with the forced descent to the ocean surface. These shots are really a mix of footage filmed on different planes and in different places and then edited together to create believable scenes. Most of this film is a collage of multiple overlays, edits, and manipulations of the images. This is where image editing and forensic software has become very helpful for me because I can easily see if a wing or a shoreline, for instance, was placed into the frame after the original image capture. I can also alter various attributes or isolate them in order to discern intent and process or see things occasionally that I wouldn't be able to see otherwise. However, I can't do everything I would like. I can't always know what was beneath a flattened image or what may have been there before an edit was made. But either way, the benefits are many and much can be worked out with the effort. One of the things I've learned in this field of researching deception in imagery is that when the intent is to hide something, you will be mostly but rarely completely successful in the endeavor. Uh, this is why the truth in video images is often found within a small minority of frames, while the majority of them are hiding whatever needed to be hid. This is the case with the two clips that I'm going to show you. Each clip has been digitally altered in order to hide a truth to continue a fiction, and the trick is to find that fraction of truth that was missed in order to unravel the fiction within which the majority of truth had been woven. Therefore, I'm going to focus on only on the information that demonstrates the truth of what you're seeing and explain how most of this truth was covered up. Clip number one. This clip is the evidential linchpin proving Fuddy's ditching plane had no forward speed. When people are viewing the Fuddy crash video for pleasure or entertainment, as nearly all viewers do, the fast-moving seas direct their focus to the left of the screen, towards the front of the plane, and it is there that the conscious mind will focus its attention. This leaves only the unconscious mind to recognize the abnormally colored area in the ditching scene, presented on the right side of the screen, and when our peripheral vision catches that yellowed spot, the unconscious mind reviews recent memories and similar experiences, and decides that it is just like the reflection scene earlier in the Fuddy Crash video, and moves on with our conscious mind never knowing. In this clip showing part of the ditching scene, I want you to consciously focus on the area of ocean discoloration. I've highlighted this area, and as you can see, this spot starts very small. If you've ever watched the Fuddy plane crash video, you may have noticed that the cameraman's yellow shirt reflects in the window many times before the the ditching actually takes place. And like myself, had you seen that, it's likely that when you now see this area of discoloration, you more than likely attribute its appearance to the yellow reflection seen earlier in that video. 
And while our initial conscious thought is to match it also with the earlier shirt reflection, we now can take a more critical look at what we are seeing. And this is where we learn that the reflected shirt is not what we are looking at. One of the ways that we can tell that a reflected shirt does not fully explain what we see in the clip is because the cameraman, the camera, and the window relative to one another are basically stationary. So the reflection wouldn't change significantly in size or position as the plane nears the surface. And yet that is what we are seeing it do. Also, if you look at the color transition from yellow to black, most notable near the bottom of the discolored area, you will see that you are looking at some type of a black material around the edge of the lighter colored area. Its roughly cut edges are visible, and you can see sections of the material partially torn or cut away from the main section. This is definitely not part of a reflection in the window, and it certainly is something outside of the plane. In fact, as you watch the last part of this clip, you can see this material slowly waving back and forth in the ocean current. This shows you that the material you see is either in or on the water. And while you may feel that you are descending towards the water with a fast rate of forward speed, to be able to see objects in or on the water that are stable in their position without having to adjust your sight angle continuously to view them require that you are also stable in your position relative to the object that you are viewing. Therefore, you cannot be descending towards the ocean surface with any measurable forward speed. The only remaining solution that makes sense of all that you are seeing is that the waves you see flying past below you are an optical illusion, a digital overlay, done to make you perceive something that is not actually happening. Now you know you're being lowered down to the ocean surface, but you are not moving forward. It's just that simple. And despite the fact that in most of this scene, digital editing was used to alter the discolored area to look more like a shirt than a cutout section of material in the ocean, and the yellow shirt reflection added earlier in the Fuddy video was done to reinforce this belief currently, we can use this remaining fragment of truth to discern the reality of what we are seeing. Were the plane not lowered down right next to that discolored spot in the ocean, disproving forward speed may have been an impossible task. But it was, and we could, and now we have. No prop airplane could replicate the physics of this action. This plane is definitely being lowered to the surface by a power not its own. Now, I could tell you what the material is and why it's there, but that leads me to feel the need to add even more information, and it doesn't change the material that you see. It only allows you to better categorize what it's being used for, and I can promise you this is a repeating cycle. There's a lot more to explain, but it's best that I do it in other videos. Okay, that's a good start. Uh, now, let's look at this clip without further commentary. After that, we'll watch it once at full speed with no visual aids. Okay, and last time with no highlights at full speed. Clip number two. In this second clip, the plane just made an emergency ocean ditching and the passengers are scrambling to exit the cabin. After the impact, the cameraman points his camera out his window to make sure we see water foaming and splashing up against the side of the plane. He then points the camera out the window just ahead of him. Here, a dark material, again, is visible <laughs> hanging down from the trailing edge of the right wing, obstructing our view of whatever lies in front of it. Picture a black giant shower curtain on a rod positioned just underneath the full length of the wing, secured with lines that come over the top of the wing. Digital editing is then used to disguise those lines as rivulets of water on our passenger window. And then in the blink of an eye, digital editing magically transforms that black shower curtain into ocean water. Now I've slowed the clip down and highlighted the area to help direct your attention to the curtain before it's digitally altered, and then continue that so that you can watch it transform into water. Now logic tells us that a plane making an emergency ditching into the ocean wouldn't have a tarp attached underneath the wing upon splashdown. So now you know that it's there and that something's being hidden from you. You know that this ocean ditching wasn't an accident, but a well-planned occurrence. This was definitely Definitely not a plane crash. Now let's look at this last clip without further commentary. After that, we'll watch it once at full speed with no visual aids. Then I'll give a quick wrap up and ask for your input and support. Thanks so much for your time. Okay, and last time with no highlights at full speed. In 
the two clips presented, my only alterations were to slow them down and highlight portions of the footage when helpful. At first, I thought I could just show the clips and state my case, but it wasn't that simple. I've watched the Fuddy video hundreds of times and gone through it frame by frame more than once. I can't just look at a clip and perceive it as if it's new to me. So I'm continually asking for input and have started over numerous times because I keep seeing how I can make it better. Admittedly, I'm a bit of a perfectionist because I want to do the best work possible and I understand the importance of getting this right. And until I reach a point when I don't feel that I can make it better, I'm inclined to keep working at it. Really though, it's done when it's done. I have no real say in it. I'm basically just the labor. Five months though, to do all this research and work and to have only made one video. I know it's important. I also know I overthink things. I hope it's enough. It feels finished. I guess we'll see. Better to have put in too much than not enough. I made the intro myself. I hope people get the humor. Really, it was just a way to decompress after a 10 to 12 hour day working and researching the Fuddy video. There's not time right now for me to get into why I do this, but I will eventually in one of the next videos. I would love to hear your comments though so I can improve the process. Thank you for your time. Hey, thanks for watching my first video. Please help me get this information out. You can do that by liking the video, sharing it, or both. Please also subscribe to my channel. If you appreciate the information I'm putting out and would like to help me continue to do so, I have donation links in the description area underneath this video. I've also added a link to download the Brave browser because it's fast, private, secure. They'll pay you to receive ads and to do that, they utilize crypto and blockchain technology. I love it. You should try it. If you don't already have it, you can download it in the description. Thank you for your time. I'm going to get to work on the next video and I will talk with you soon.